in the journalism profession, we are called on to do stories dealing with tough topics like crime, corruption, and other problems faced by society. And those issues need to be exposed and addressed, but we also share stories of inspiration and hope. People overcoming odds to succeed or people giving of themselves to help others. For this show, we have assembled some of our inspiring stories from the past few years and we will bring you more of them in the future. Here are stories of inspiration. How does Zayla Avantgarde spell success? Solidungulate. S-O-L-I-D-U-N-G-U-L-A-T-E. According to Webster Dictionary, it means having a single hoof on each foot. Before Zayla, that word earned her a spot in the Scripps National Spelling Bee Finals. I definitely knew how to spell it. There was no trouble there. The 14-year-old from Harvey is currently in Orlando, Florida, getting ready to compete against 10 other students, ranging from 5th to 8th grade from all across the country. I'm really looking forward to tonight. Kashkai. Cute. It's taken a lot of practice to get here, but Zayla has become a pro at juggling many talents at once, including her numerous accomplishments on the court. Basketball is actually like the main thing I do um, because like I started playing basketball and doing that type of stuff when I was five years old. She's appeared in a commercial with Stephen Curry and get this, Zayla holds three Guinness World Records for dribbling. The main one I have that I'm most proud of is the one I, is the biggest basketball Guinness World Record which is most basketballs dribbled simultaneously by one person, which is uh, six balls. She has more than 12,000 followers on Instagram and, yeah, like that. and hopes to inspire other young girls to like try new things and play sports and stuff. What do you want to do one day? I mean, where are you thinking all of this will take you? Well, I have a lot of different ideas. I might be like an NBA basketball coach or something I'm looking into. I also might like work for NASA if, or if I can. And I also have some interest in like treating diseases. Ambitions that tonight start with spelling for a cash prize of $50,000. I hope that I can make it far. And she may not need it, but Zayla has one favor to ask. Wish me luck. Wishing you luck. This spelling bee is a slam dunk. Erica Ferrando, Eyewitness News. Good. There are not many one-year-olds who know how to use a doctor's stethoscope, but Blakely Estevez has seen it used a lot. You'll see that this giant thing right here is the tumor that's not supposed to be there. Blakely was just nine months old when a cascade of heartache began for her family. Cancer on her left kidney destroyed it. It was removed along with a precancerous lesion on her right one. Her dad switched jobs as a firefighter in Homer to Jefferson Parish. So right at the time the cancer was found, they had no medical insurance for a couple of months. They also lost their home in Norco to Hurricane Ida and were living with relatives in Gretna. That's when Holy Cross freshman Drew Larney noticed a new family, strangers walking in his neighborhood. He felt he had to make a difference. Because, like, she can't do anything for herself because she can't walk or talk. He just loved Blakely. It was super sweet, and he just kind of, you know, really cared about the, her story and wanting to help. Last school year, Drew helped his fellow Holy Cross Tigers win the state title in swimming. It was an act of courage and perseverance as he fought back from a broken pelvis to swim that day. His doctor at Children's Hospital was not sure that he could. Because Dr. Scalic told me that if I swam, it would inspire people to continue going through it. But how am I going to inspire someone? Inspired by his doctor and cousin who survived cancer in high school, Drew is now paying it forward. Saturday morning at 7.30, he plans to swim 200 times back and forth in the Cypress Lakes Country Club pool in Destrehan to help pay for Blakely's medical bills. And it snowballed. A hospital administrator is joining him. So are 20 other Holy Cross former and current swimmers. They've never done 1,500 yards at once. It'll totally be worth it. And I think, I think I could wake up at 4 in the morning for this. It doesn't matter what time. I hope that I can do something greater than myself, you know, help someone out that wasn't going to get help before. We're very grateful for him and, you know, impressed by his, you know, just strive to do it. Recently, Blakely got to ring the children's hospital bell. Her chemo is done. Drew has been going door to door. He was hoping to reach $500 in donations. 
And to his surprise, strangers feel they have to make a difference too. So he's already far surpassed his goal. Meg Farris, Eyewitness News. Theo College, what school is this? Hilbert College. Always um, been devoted to trying to get my school work done and get good grades always, of course, like the average child. At just 16, Dennis Barnes is anything but the average child. He's just a few weeks away from graduating from international high school, and he's got a big decision to make. What college will he attend? I have Loyola Marymount University. Well, he's got at least 125 to choose from. It's not normal. I know it's not, of course. I started at some place. I mean, I guess there's a starting point for everything. I started and didn't realize where I was going. But as I realized the path I was heading down, like I said, I rolled my momentum and then I ended up farther than I even would have ever thought I would have been. According to those around him, that starting point came when he was little. While his mom is proud, she's not surprised. He's always been very inquisitive. Um, always on top of everything. Barnes maintains a more than perfect GPA, is dual enrolled at Southern University and is bilingual. With a resume like that, why apply to so many schools? It's all about vision. It's to look at it from a broad spectrum and opening the vacuum very wide so that he can have an array of opportunities. Not only has he been racking up college acceptance letters, his mailbox has been overflowing with scholarships, over $9 million and possibly a new record. As the numbers started getting bigger and bigger, um, my drive was there. It started getting more and more and more. A drive that doesn't seem like it'll dim anytime soon as he gets ready to study computer science. I think I'm looking for a place where I'm going to be comfortable, where they're going to take care of me financially. I know that he has big ambition, big goals, and I believe with everything in me that he's going to achieve all of it. I don't know, but we play basketball like all the time. Well, because it's basketball season. Not anymore. Yes, it is. Leilani and Earl Blake Wisecarver go at it like so many close siblings. It's welcome noise to mom, Marissa, though, especially after what the family went through four years ago. It was devastating and terrifying. And um, it's just something any, any parent would not want to hear. At five, a blood test revealed the bruising on Earl Blake was from blood cancer, leukemia. There was a couple of years of steroids, a port, pills, and lumbar punctures so chemo could be infused into his spine. Earl Blake remembers the nausea and feeling different from his friends who had hair. I remember when I was like bald, it was like in the summertime and I had to wear a beanie because I was like scared to show them that I was bald. I would just say the cancer did it and the medicine did it. I prayed for Earl Blake to get better and like in religion, we get, we like say prayers before and uh, everybody raised their hand for my brother. Now these two sibs and some of their classmates at St. Christopher School have joined Army for a Cause. It was started by a longtime family friend who's only 16. I was like devastated. I didn't know, um, I didn't know what to do. It was terrifying. Lucy Nockhan is a junior at Chappelle and she has put together a team of high school students at Chappelle and other schools to join in a seven week challenge to raise funds for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. She was inspired last year at the ceremony when Earl Blake won its Honored Hero of the Year and she met high schoolers in the Student Visionaries of the Year program. So now she's competing against other school teams to raise the most. We're supporting other families who were affected like Earl Blake was and we're working to make sure that they don't have to go through the same difficulties that he did. She's amazing. It's, I'm so proud of her. It's amazing that she saw what we went through and will now help others. It's been two years since Chloe Williams lost the use of her legs to gun violence. She was simply playing outside after school, an innocent victim, when she was caught in the crossfire of a drive-by shooting on North Prior Street. Former NOPD officer Daniel McQuarrie 
used his U.S. Army training and a first aid kit he got for Christmas to save her life as she lay dying in the street. Still, the bullet severed her spinal cord. Officer McQuarrie is now a detective in the Crime Reduction Unit in the Buren Police Department. It's part of the King County Sheriff's Office outside of Seattle. He's never forgotten Chloe. He was there when she got out of her long stay in Children's Hospital. He flew back to New Orleans to be with her at her celebration of life one year after the shooting. And this special bond continues even now. Nearly 2,600 miles away, his new fellow officers in the Seattle Southside Chamber decided to help Chloe as well. They raised money to fly Chloe and her mom, Laranisha, to Seattle for Shop with a Cop. Every Christmas, they give dozens of children who've been through adversity money for a shopping spree. Her flight was canceled earlier this month, but finally it happened. They both went on the trip. It was Chloe's first time on a plane, and it was the first time a child from out of town became part of this annual adventure. Detective McQuarrie and his fellow officers spent the time showering Chloe with toys and Christmas love and hope. Meg Farris, Eyewitness News. I've raced it in Mobile, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, and Pensacola, Florida. At Ronnie Osmer can trade paint with the best of them. And also with this car, in 2014, I won Rookie of the Year at Mobile. A natural at an early age, driving a go-kart right here at his home in Pearl River. When he was five years old, and a kid came down from with a big adult cart and challenged to a race. And I said, give him about a half a lap head start and then go catch him. And he passed him in like one lap, passed him. My wife's like, go ahead. With mom's approval, Osmer left the makeshift cart track in his yard to compete at real tracks all around the southeast. In the first year, he won a few races and we were having fun. By the second year, he won the championship. Uh, third year in it, he won the Louisiana championship and Alabama, Alabama state championship. He just showed he could drive. It's like I've been having this since I was 2011. So His ability fun. eventually earned him a spot in the ARCA series, a stock car racing league considered a feeder in the NASCAR. At 15, Osmer became the second youngest driver to start a race. It's just you and a race car and 42 other competitors, and y'all are battling it out to check our flag and get a nice shiny trophy. Osmer is just like any typical high school senior. He even played soccer right here for Pope John Paul II High School. But unlike a typical high school senior, Osmer will be behind the wheel racing at one of the most iconic super speedways in America, Daytona International Speedway. At the beginning of this year, the 18-year-old tested for a super speedway license at Daytona. Osmer got the certification. The next day, his racing team, Max Force Racing out of Mobile, told Osmer they wanted him to race in this Saturday's ARCA Series Lucas Oil 200. The kid who idolized Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Jr. will now race on the same track they succeeded on for the first time in his career. Before the green flag drops, I'm going to be full of nerves, going crazy, thinking, I can't believe I'm actually on Daytona. Someone pitched me, I'm probably dreaming. But as soon as that green flag drops, it's, it'll, it'll almost feel like another race where it's foot to the floor and I'm battling for first. It's like a dream come true. And I know it's his dream, but you know, it's every NASCAR fan would love to be. A dream coming true for a natural. In Pearl River, Ricardo LeCompte, Eyewitness Sports. At 29 years old, Haley Arsenault has already beat cancer, achieved her dream to work at St. Jude, and her next big milestone, a trip to space. It isn't the coolest thing to happen to me. The Louisiana native was only 10 years old when she was diagnosed with bone cancer. I remember just thinking um, cancer was a death sentence because everyone who had known with cancer at age 10 had died. Um, and it really wasn't until I got to St. Jude a few days later when I felt hope. She spent the next year at St. Jude Children's Hospital in Memphis undergoing chemo and surgery where part of her femur was replaced with a metal rod. Nearly 20 years later, she now works there as a physician assistant. All I've ever wanted to do is work at St. Jude. Last month, she got a call about St. Jude's role in a big mission. And basically said, do you want to go to space? And immediately I said, yes, yes, please. And um, 
And then I, you know, I thought for a second, I was like, let me check with my mom. Haley was selected as the second crew member for Inspiration 4, the world's first all civilian mission to space. Later this year, the four person crew will orbit Earth on a multi day journey. It's being funded by billionaire businessman Jared Isaacman. And he wanted to use it for good. The mission will raise awareness and funds for St. Jude. Haley's role in all of this to offer hope. She'll be the youngest American. I think I'm going to be the first Cajun. <laughs> and first person with a prosthesis to go to space. Honestly, what I'm most excited about is being the first pediatric cancer survivor in space. Like out of, out of all these firsts, like just, just that new precedent it's going to set and what it's going to show these kids what they're capable of. She hasn't even taken off yet, but this mission is already offering hope to pediatric cancer patients. One of the moms came up to me. Um, it was a mom and daughter and the mom was just in tears telling me how much this meant to her daughter and how it was giving her daughter hope and um and the little girl had been discouraged recently because she's she can't run or jump and I told her I can't run or jump either um because of the prosthesis in my leg but it's not stopping me from going to space proving even the sky isn't the limit Erica Ferrando Eyewitness News If this photo is any indication, 38-year-old Ronnie Cass doesn't take his role as a bus driver lightly. Just ask the kids. He'll joke with us. He's always so sweet. The best driver I've ever had. And he would all, always call us our little angels, and we always used to pray for him all the time. It's been a difficult day. Monday morning, Cass was picking up Lancaster Elementary kids in the Bidigo Creek subdivision in Madisonville. His wife, Mindy, says he later told her he felt himself shaking, so he pulled the emergency brake. That's when he had a seizure. He was struggling to kind of pull over. Everyone was screaming at me to call 911. Divine intervention from God, he just felt it and decided to pull over and save the, it could have been so much worse. This nurse anesthetist was right outside when it happened. I tended to Mr. Ronnie and, and, and got him where he needed to be and uh, the kids had already called 911. They're, they're the real heroes here, them and um, you know, Mr. Ronnie himself for having the, uh, the forethought to get the bus in the park before he, he went unconscious. That's, that's what really kept the situation from being a lot worse. In August, Cass was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. He spent much of the last year going to chemo and radiation between his morning and evening bus routes. He still kept driving these kids. I don't think he'd have it any other way. Following the seizure Monday morning, his family learned the cancer spread. A tumor was found in his brain. Parents in Bidico Creek quickly came together to figure out what they could do to help Cass and his family. We would like to see a year's salary um, being raised for this family because who knows when he'll go back to work. In less than six hours, a GoFundMe account surpassed $7,000. We certainly didn't realize we had this big of an impact on people. We just are just humbled at the, the outreach. And Mr. Ronnie, if you're watching, the kids have a message for you. We love him. We love you and we're going to be praying for you. We hope you get better and we're going to be so happy that we get to hear your funny jokes again. Yes, that's, that's what I would probably say too. In Madisonville, Erica Ferrando, Eyewitness News. I'm Jordan Pembo. I'm 17 years old and I'm the highest rated female chess player in Louisiana. And of women my age, I am 45th in the world. I started playing chess when I was like five or six years old. Most of my life has just been filled with chess and I'm not, I got, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm pretty happy to be where I am right now. kids around or higher than my level because my coach always wants me to have competition so that's how I actually grow because if you play against people that are not as good as you then you generally don't grow you just kind of become overconfident and like stuck.
Well, I've heard people say chess is a boring sport. That is a lie. I have gone into chess matches and come out with so much adrenaline in my body that my hands are physically shaking. There are certain strategies you have to follow, but I've found that every chess game is different. Like, you don't walk in with a whole plan of, oh, this is how this entire game's gonna go, because you're playing against someone else who has their entire own plan. Chess is extremely beautiful. You can, there are thousands of different ways for a single game to go. It starts with a single move of a piece and ends in beautiful end games. You can make one mistake and bring yourself back from that, or your opponent can make one mistake and all of a sudden you have the win. It's always amazing to play, and it's amazing to see how chess is like an exhibit of other people's heads and the way they think. The tournament that I played at most recently was the Louisiana State Championship, and that was kind of like the qualifier to see who goes to the Danker, who goes to the Barber, who goes to the Herring, and those are all the national tournaments of different sections. Tournaments can get very cutthroat because you have to remember, these are women fighting for national rank. Making friends is fun, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to basically fight for our state. I don't like when you have to put a bunch of pressure on yourself, so that's one thing I'm trying to avoid with this Herring tournament. So I just kind of want to see it as having fun, mostly, and playing to the best of my ability. You don't want to stress yourself out over it, but you also want to be aware that you are aiming to win. <laughs>